everyone, it's Anthony from Glad. How are you all? Um, today, we are going to be doing a hangout chat with Daniel Howell, who is a comedian who is touring. Um, I think he's currently in California right now, um, but we'll, we're going to check in. Uh, he is obviously, um, a lot of you are familiar with him from his uh, YouTube channel and of course comedy and he's a best-selling author uh but he's gonna be here in just a second let me see if he's here already uh he is very the magic of instagram will bring us together daniel i'm, I'm accepting you hang on one second there we go uh hello hi oh. how you doing Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you for asking right now. I just sprayed myself with cologne, because I was like- You smell I gotta delicious. get ready for something. <laughs> and then I had what, a moment where I'm like, hey. What's I'm the cologne? Hi, nice Can to I meet ask? you, I'm Dan. Oh, it was, a, it was like a YSL one that I got a little the free sample of, because I'm living on a tour bus right now. So being able to smell good is a privilege. Yeah. I'm not taking for granted, yeah. Um, well, I can smell it. You smell lovely. Thank uh, thanks for, that. thanks yeah. for the spritz. Uh, it's so nice to meet you. Listen, um, Likewise. I've heard so much about you. I did a little dive into your work, and okay. I think it's so great what you're doing to do comedy, to entertain people, but I know so much of what you're doing is rooted in uh, talking about mental health, which is obviously mm. something that's so important for our community. But give us a little um, peek into your show, because I think tonight, are you in Anaheim? Is that right? I am in Anaheim, you know, the center You're very of close to, to Disneyland. The world. You're I'm very close I went to Disneyland yesterday. I'm wearing this sweater, because I'm not a Disney gay. I will admit, I apologize. <laughs> but I saw this, and it's black and white, because I'm one of those people that only wears black. Because, you know, ooh, it's so philosophical and fashionable. No, I'm just like a little emo. <laughs> <really over> <laughs> I love it. Um, but it's got, a, it's got a D on it. That could be anything. It could be D for Dan. D for Dan. D for Christian. D for Dan. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like it does everything. So, D yeah, for Dan. All of it. I'll take that. Thank you. So, yes, I'm feeling extremely cuddly in this fleece right now. Thank you for asking. So... Well, first off, how was Disneyland? We'll, we'll talk about your show, but how was Disneyland? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, more importantly, it was good. It was incredibly festive. I'm someone that struggles to let the joy into my life. So somewhere where it's really being crammed down your throat all the time, I feel like I need to spend more time in places like that. So I was like, oh, yeah, the holiday spirit. It's really, okay, I feel it now. So that was good. Was it, yeah. it, had, it had to have been super busy, I know, because it's like holiday time. It's crazy. It was. I had a bunch of people that were like, I'm coming to your show tomorrow. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Nice to meet you. And they said, I feel like I don't need to go to the show now. I just met you outside Splash Mountain. It's like, yeah, okay, fine. There you go. <laughs> You're like, no, still buy that. Yeah, no, please come. Yeah, up. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but listen, so it's called We Are All Doomed. So you're it is, in um, Anaheim right now. And I think you're heading to Arizona tomorrow. That is it. Yeah, I have been in America for two and a half months living on a bus. And the final two shows are Anaheim and glorious Mesa, Arizona. What Hey. What do you think of the U.S. touring? I mean, I'm sure you've been here before, but when you're on a tour bus uh, touring, it's a little different than, you know, going and staying at the Four Seasons. Yeah. I mean, I, I quite like the bus vibes. There is something okay. about it. I've said this before. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable, but it's quite womb-like sleeping in a bunk. Because if you imagine, it's just like a, a very cramped, dark space. You're just kind of sliding into it sideways, and then you're like, I'm being rocked gently in a very warm, dark, cramped area. I fall asleep like that. There are some people that go, you get on a tour bus, you live in that life. No, no, you're just gonna, no. you're gonna fall apart. Whereas I'm like, this is actually, this is what I'm meant for. Yeah. I, you know, let me answer someone's question. So any, cause you have so many fans and in case anyone is not familiar with GLAAD and what we do, um, because people are donating, which is so generous, but GLAAD, we're a nonprofit. We are media advocacy. We're working every day. Uh, with media, so that means through television, film, music, beyond, with comedians, YouTubers, all over to make sure that they're accurate and inclusive, uh, well done stories about the LGBTQ community and representation. So look, when we've got someone like Daniel Howell, who's a part of the community that's doing amazing work in the comedy space, in the digital space, we want to, you know, use our lens to bring awareness and to support because we know how, uh, you know, we know how much the work that you do and what you say on stage and on your channel can really support uplift and help so many people because you know let's talk about that you you have been very honest and open about um mental health and depression mm -hmm. and i think it's something that you weave into your show of course but um how would you say that 
now doing these comedy shows and tackling that has been cathartic and beneficial for your own just mental well-being. It has been incredibly cathartic because I've been doing this for a long time. This is the 13th year of my accidental horror career. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry for the world. I'd like to apologize for 13 years of destruction. Um, but the last time I went on tour, I was in the closet and I did feel on some level it was holding me back from being able to connect with my audience on a more authentic level and for me to just enjoy it because I was just so afraid of you know, yeah. the great closet the whole time just every single waking second of my existence so now that I'm out here I feel like oh I mean people are joking what are they call it they're saying that this is my hot boy autumn because I'm out here finally just living life enjoying it and it just feels good as well but I know that I have um, a lot of young queer people in my audience and even just a lot of cis -hat allies that just yeah. enjoy being able to come to a place where they know they're welcome and they can relax and they can have fun because especially in a comedy show like sometimes you could turn up and you'd be like oh i don't know if this is going to be the right energy i don't know if what they're going to say on stage how it's going to be for me in the room so to know that people can just come and they have something to look forward to and that they can just enjoy a night and not have to worry about that yeah. it makes me feel very happy about what i'm doing which i need as well <laughs> yeah and you know i think so much about this because I've, I've talked to so many creators artists talent that have said that you know after they came out after they accept themselves you know and were living themselves you know authentically honestly yeah. that the art and the content that they put out was so much better and just oh, yeah. overall i think it's funnier as well because especially if you're making jokes about something that's real i think people can tell that it's real I and mean, it comes from a place of yeah you know deep emotional pain that you're now reclaiming and turning it into content i don't think that people like that so yeah no i'm with you 100 percent, and that just goes to show why you know, it may be hard for some different people, but we should all aspire to be as authentic as possible as soon as we can in our lives. Um, for sure. And, you know, what do you, if, if someone, you know, is clicking on from our handle and, you know, yeah. seeing you first, what, what can they expect if they come to your show, whether it's tonight? And I know you're heading overseas again. I am, to yeah, right. Australia. Australia. In Australia and all across Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the show is called We're All Doomed, and it is a show about whether or not we should all just give up and die. And I'm trying to make the case that we shouldn't, because even though the world seems pretty terrible, maybe there are some redeemable factors for humanity. So I figure, kind of like me being in the closet, we spend a lot of time bubbling up anxiety and stress about things in our life that we're afraid to confront. So I just said, let's do a show where we just aggressively confront literally everything that's wrong with the world as head on as possible, try to make some inappropriate jokes about it. On one level, we might just feel better about all the problems in the world now that we're just talking about it and getting it out there. But if we actually manage to find something to look forward to, then hey, that's a double whammy right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, expect lots of jokes about uh, death and the end of the world and me being a deranged homosexual. And then if you accidentally leave feeling hopeful for the future, then hey, Merry Christmas, you know. <laughs> Early Christmas present. Um, yeah. With your experience, you know, with coming out and accepting yourself, why do you think you had such a hard time with it? Because I know how I, you know, I was worried about depressing or, or disappointing my parents. I was worried about the religion of it all. You know, we mm -hmm. all have our reasons. What, yeah. what was yours? I think for my, it was just the homophobia in school because in the UK, yeah. we had the culture back in the 90s. And it was honestly, what it boils down to is when gay used to be an insult, just when people used to be like, oh, gay, gay equals bad. Mm -hmm. I know I'm gay, I equal bad. And it's that internalized homophobia that just took me literal decades to get to the point where I could be like, this is who I am and I am actually okay existing. Yeah. And it took me until that moment where I went, I am not gonna think anymore that the thing that I know on the inside, I clearly am, is bad, but that it is who I am and it's fine. That moment I accepted that is what completely changed my life. And I think that applies to so many people's journeys, whether someone watching this feels like they are yeah. gay or bi or ace, or maybe they're questioning their gender identity or any part of their life, their careers, their relationships, you cannot run away from the truth. Is what what is it like, I mean, you know, for you to have such a, you know, they're all here, which I love it, and so many of them are donating. Thank you all, your Thank supporting you. work to accelerate um, acceptance for the LGBTQ community that we're doing every single day at Can I say that as someone that's had to do a lot of media, I yeah. know what you guys do, and that a lot of people really need the guidance. <laughs> so yeah, no, I that. appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Ooh, there's a whole heteronormative world out there, and they need all the help that they can get, so thank you. <laughs> I love that. I mean, what, but what's it like for you to know that you have such a loyal 
you know, worldwide fan base that just loves what you do on YouTube, on social, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully they're coming to see your shows too, if, you know, if they can get a ticket and like, you know, what's that like to have that kind of connection? Because they're it all showing wild. us right now. It's been so long as well. It's been so many years where all of these people that are like, hey, I just logged onto YouTube as a bored teenager. Right. And now this strange <laughs> British man is a part of my life eight years later. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's a, it's the same thing. But it's really cool to know that um, we've all been on this journey of not just getting older, hurling towards our inevitable deaths, but also just growing as a person, just being on this journey as the crazy world continues to spin round and round. And here we all still are together. So I do appreciate it. Was there ever, like, thinking back on your journey to acceptance and coming out, did you ever, like, turn on the TV or read a book or go to the movies and be like, hey, hmm, maybe that's me? Or, like, did you have ever have those kind of representation moments? Because I know mm. they can be pretty impactful. I know. I mean, the th I think the thing for me that held me back the most was the lack of representation. Of that course. I had. Because I had not met a single gay person in my life. I mean, obviously, I'd met loads of gay people in my life, but I hadn't met an out gay person until I was literally 17, 18 years old. And that made me think, I am the only gay in the world. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is why it's a horrible, horrible secret that I need to sit on, because, oh my God, I'm the only one. Turns out, obviously, half my friends were freaking gay. Everyone I knew at school, we're all the nerds, all the theater kids. I mean, who were we kidding? Everyone goes to college, you go on Facebook right now, it's like, oh, you've all got boyfriends. <laughs> so to me, the world makes a lot more sense. And that's why when, even though I was obviously quite terrified to come out so publicly on YouTube, I knew how important it was just to be, yeah, by the way, this guy who you might have been watching on YouTube since God knows when, when you were probably supposed to be doing something in school and now you're an adult. Yeah, I was gay the whole time. And that really means something to someone, so yeah. That's, I love that. I mean, and what are some of the things, do you have any like special memories or recent memories about what some of your fans have said to you about, you know, what your story maybe coming out has helped them or maybe um, gave them cor courage to, you know, talk to their parents or accept themselves? I mean, on the silliest level, I came out to my family by literally sending them an email saying basically I'm gay. No, no, okay, so I, look, this, the, they know this, it was Christmas Day, I was gonna come out, and then I thought, I'm not gonna do this on Jesus's birthday, I'm not gonna make this day all about me. There would be nothing more stereotypically gay, and we're trying to not be stereotypical, than making Christmas all about you by stealing the spotlight. So I was like, no. And then it was my mum's birthday, and I was like, I can't do that to my mum's birthday. And then it was Easter, and then I went, okay, I'm actually now just giving excuses. So I just sent them an email saying, look, I'm gay, call me if you've got a problem with it, and then threw my laptop across the room. And so when people go, how do I come out to my parents? This is hard, I don't know what to do. It's like, you literally cannot do it any weirder than I did. <laughs> so An on email, some level, I love that. if I did it, so can you. And now I've got people coming up to me and they're like, hi Dan, I'm not actually gay, but um, last time I met you, I was a different gender. Yeah, it turns out that I didn't have a crush on you. I just wanted to be you. And then people turn up at my show as a trans mask looking exactly like me, but with better styled hair. And I'm like, <laughs> how dare you? You just said, I'm gonna have you, but then I'm gonna do it better. And then they're gonna turn up to my show and then just flex on me in a better outfit. So yeah, I'm just, I'm getting a lot of that these days. And I'm trying to take it as a compliment, you know? Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, come on. And um, did you, um, how did your, that email go? I mean, were your parents like, I, we, how was that? It was, well, I mean, the thing is, we all have been on a journey in the world. We all like to complain about how bad the world is now, which it is, there's still a lot of problems, but I'm sure you appreciate this as well, that five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we are making so much progress. The world is getting so much more accepting every single day because of the work that you guys do and all of these people in the chat right now that are being so supportive. I love that, if yeah. I was in the mid nineties, I don't know how it would have gone down. I think I'm very lucky that I managed to procrastinate it until 2021, where the world is a lot more accepting. And my family were at this point in life where they were like, we love you for who you are. We wow. know that this is who you are and it's fine. And we're just happy that you can be yourself. And I was like, thank you. Are you, so, yeah. are you based in the UK most of the, like when you're not on tour? In sunny, sunny London. Yeah, the happiest Sunny, place sunny London. I, I mean, what's it like? I mean, do you find that, cause I know for the most, it's like, you know, there's always places. London itself is probably pretty a pretty accepting and welcoming place. Is that, do you find that accurate? 
It is, yeah. It's one of those big, big cities where everyone's quiet. You know, there's loads of gay bars. Um, it's quite a, a safe place generally. Um, so I feel quite privileged because obviously the small town that I came from, I don't. I'm like, I never want to go back there. People go, are you going to do a show in your hometown? I'm trying to actively drive as far away from my hometown as possible all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those people. So yeah, I, I think I'm happy just staying in the big city. Thank you very much. Do you? Um, have a dream like touring destination that you still haven't been to yet? Oh, I mean, we are doing some random places. We are about to go all over Australia, which is beautiful. We're going to New Zealand, which is beautiful. We're going all over Europe and we're ending the show in Iceland, which is the place where oh. I most wanted to go in the world. And I think it's quite bold. You know, I'm doing a show called We're All Doomed. We talk about a lot of things. We're talking about climate change. I don't know if there will be any ice left by May in 2023, I might just get there and it'll be just like a sad polar bear sat in a bucket of water, but I will be happy to eventually make it to Iceland. Yeah. That's exciting. That That's amazing. Um, should we take a couple of fan questions or pop Absolutely. a number here? Yeah. All right. So introverted T said, after a well-deserved rest after touring, what can we expect in the future? By the way, we love you. How sweet. Oh, thank you. Well, like I said, let's see if I survive the tour. It's very <laughs> long. It's very, very long. Um, there are a bunch of things, things that I've had on the back burner for a couple of years that I'm going to revisit. Um, people want me to write some more. As time goes on, I'm starting to feel like I want to do less things that are about myself. People go, Dan, are you going to write fiction? Are you going to appear in other people's shows? Are you going to play a character? And I'm thinking, you know what I need a break from? Dan. <laughs> so let's see, that might manifest as something really exciting. Or as I've been threatening people, I will just move to a remote chuck in London. No, wait, where's where's like the the Orkney Islands, somewhere off the coast of Scotland, like a dramatic the Scottish island. Swept, yeah. Like yeah. a shed. It's just like a lighthouse and then I'm inside, I've got a typewriter and I'm just pumping out like erotic fiction and self publishing on Amazon. I, yeah. I mean I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Er erotic cool. fiction from Daniel Powell. Absolutely. Yeah, it'll, it'll be game. It'll, it'll be game. Be game. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting question. I, I'm sure you haven't had time. What do you think about Harry and Meghan having a Netflix special? I think that, you know, they need to get that coin. It's like the royal family were like, we're not going to give you any money more. And I was just like, okay, work. Literally. L work. <laughs> um, someone said, what has been the favorite place that you've been to on this tour so far? <laughs> You want me to choose someone? Obviously Anaheim, where I'm about to meet a bunch of people and do a show. I am so happy to be in Anaheim. Disneyland. Yes. Uh, someone asked, um, it said, it, their name is It's Not Rachel S. Did you get the fried ravioli in St. Louis? Does that make sense to you? <laughs> I did a show and I was like, what should I eat here? And they're like, fried ravioli. <laughs> and yeah. Because, hey, you know, ravioli is pretty good. Fried food's good. What do you do when you're in the middle of nowhere? You fry the pasta. And obviously, it was incredible. How is it not going to be incredible? What's it was amazing. Like? Yeah. What's the show that you're binging or excited to binge? Uh, there is a new reality show in the UK called Traitors, which is basically that game Among Us, the TV show, where a bunch of people have to... Uh, do a bunch of challenges together living in the castle and one by one, one of them gets murdered in the night, like a murder mystery tour. I think they just come into Peacock in America with Kate from Below Deck, gay icon. Um, yes, and Brandy Glanville. I on know, it. what a mess. I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> Are you a Housewives gang? Yeah. I I'm, okay, so this is the thing. I didn't want to be my whole life because I'm quite, I'm this like pretentious British guy. I'm very self deprecating, very sarcastic. British people, we are so horrible and snooty. So I'm like, I'm not one of these reality TV people. <laughs> I had a friend that said, I'll just watch a couple episodes of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And then obviously I got horribly addicted to it. And now I've watched every single episode of Beverly Hills, OC, Atlanta, Potomac, New Jersey, Salt Lake City. I, yeah, I hate it. Here I am. I love but it all. I'm, Who's your all time favorite housewife? Nene Leakes Nene or LDP. Leakes. I mean, yeah, Lisa Vanderpump, Nene Leakes, they're on the S tier, you know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. No, I love that. Um, that show is going to be really good. Um, so for anyone that, you know, you're like, the US tour is wrapping up mm -hmm. tonight, Anaheim, we've got Arizona. Um, oh, yeah. What, how can they find out more if they want to, you know, see you in New Zealand, wherever, or uh, Australia, wherever you're going? I managed to somehow blag my name.com. So if you go to danielhowell.com, you'll get to see where I'm going all over Australia and Europe, ending up in that Iceland. And yeah, on my social media, I'm Daniel Howell on everything. I was Dan is not on TikTok, on TikTok, because somebody already had the name 
but then someone from TikTok emailed me and said, oh, they weren't using the account. So without telling me, they just changed my name and kicked that person off the account. Oh my goodness. So, I mean, they weren't using it and they checked, but TikTok were ruthless. They were just like, what They're are like... you doing here? Click. So now I'm like, I need to acknowledge that I've just, I've just kicked someone out of the house. Um, so yeah, I need to do that at some point. I I think they were happy to give it to you. Actually, you know, this is a really good question. Thank uh, you. I'll, I'll folk, say that to myself. Yes, Folklore22 said, who was your first celebrity crush? Well, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. I thought <laughs> it was a British person. Aladdin. Aladdin? <laughs> is the answer. Okay. Heck yeah. Mine was Robbie Williams, but that's, you know, slightly yeah, different. Yeah, that was a take that era. That I mean, that was some era. boy band action. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, people are loving the TikTok. Um, and so I guess and before I click off, what are you doing for the holidays? Are you a big... Christmas person? Are you gonna have Christmas pudding? What's happening? I mean, I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna sit down, and then the moment I close my eyes, I'm gonna slip into a coma for two weeks, and then someone's just gonna be violently shaking me, going, Dan, Dan, you slept through Christmas. <laughs> you need to go to Australia. And I'll be like, okay, yeah, so that's gonna be my plan, bringing the doom to Australia. I love it. So when it, wait, so it kicks back up in Australia, what date is that? It's in January, I think, like straight away, um, like a couple of weeks into January, we're going all across Australia, New Zealand, and then over across Europe, and then we'll see what life is like. We'll see if there's a world left when I get back, and who knows what will come after. Uh, well, I love this. Well, it's been so nice to meet you. Thank you for taking the time, and I hope a lot of the glad folk here in LA are going to make the trip down to Anaheim, and we've awesome. got a lot of people in Arizona that can go tomorrow. So, um, but yeah, thanks. And look, the world is coming back in person. You know, we've got a bunch of things coming. We want to, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll collab with you in the future for sure. Well, I love that. And you guys keep doing the amazing work that you're doing because I know it. I see it. I see how people need it. And I know that everybody in the chat, all those people that donated are being. Yes, very thank kind. you for these donations. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you guys. Yeah, I, that's so wonderful that all these people donated. See, they're showing your love, this, their love for you by donating to a really good cause. Um, all right, well. I will let you get back to it because you're gonna have a couple hours to go before you get on stage. But thank you so much. Um, yeah, and we'll talk. We'll see you soon. Yes. Well, I thank you. Have a great day, and everyone in the chat. Thank you for joining. Have a wonderful gay day, and I'm sure I'll see you all soon. <laughs> a gay day. I love it. I'll see you later. <laughs> see you later. Thank Bye. you. Bye.